I'm going to go over calibration of uh, angle beam, contact, uh, ultrasonic testing using uh, an IIW type 2 block. The equipment I have is uh, the Epic 1000i from Olympus and I'm using an AWS wedge uh, which is uh, 45 degrees. This is a typical AWS wedge and I'm using a uh, two and a quarter megahertz transducer. The type 2 IIW block has a two and a four inch radius. Two inch radius and the four inch radius. So those are the two reflectors that we will use for calibration. Remember always to couple your transducer to your wedge, otherwise uh, you won't get any energy. So to start with, I set my machine at five inches, the range, because I'm using a two and a four inch radius. I want to set my range at five inches, that way um, uh, I'll be able to capture both uh, those reflectors, the two and four inch. My velocity is 0.128 inches per microsecond which is your typical shear wave of mild carbon steel. The zero, I set to zero because the calibration will um, take into account the uh, time lost in the wedge, so it will zero. Um, pulsar, make sure you always set your machine to match transducer, two and a quarter megahertz. Of course, with the Olympus machine, um, it does not have a two and a quarter megahertz setting is a 2.27 megahertz so use that it's slightly above two and a quarter so I'm going to put some coupling on my transducer or excuse me on my IAW block and right here is a zero marking that is the machine mark on the IAW type 2 block from this point to this radius is four inches and then on the other side was at two inch radius so um, I'm going to couple my transducer to the block and I see two reflectors now uh, the Olympus I uh, epic 1000 I has a peak memory what I'm going to do is just move back and forth and you can see the trace is 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 uh, remembered there how, how it shows that trace I'm going to peek right in the center of that curve what that is that is my beam index point that is where the maximum energy is coming back from this radius and again I'm using a 45 degree uh, angle and uh, by the way uh, in our trig functions I set my angle to 45 degrees because that's what our, the wedge that I'm using. So I found the peak where that signal is the strongest and what I did, I have a piece of tape here, I marked, that's my beam index point, I, that zero machine mark on the, um, on the IAW block, I marked on this masking tape where that point is, that's my beam index point. So now I want to calibrate. We have this uh, transducer in a position where I'm getting my maximum energy back. I want to take my gate, move it over that first reflector, and uh, that's the two inch radius. I'm going to take it to 80% full screen height. This tester has the ability to do a second function auto 80 and it'll take that signal to 80% full screen height. I want to push my AutoCal button and AutoCal comes up, calibration mode, sound path. There's a Cal velocity and a Cal zero. That two inch radius that's coming, reflecting back, I want to press Cal zero to, to calibrate the zero of my machine. And the machine comes back and wants to know what that value is. So I'm going to change that value to say that that sound path is two inches. there two inches press the check to continue so I stored that value 
Now, let me take my gate, move it over to my 4-inch radius, which is which is this reflector right here, 4-inch sound path. Again, second auto 80. I want to bring it down to 80% full screen height. Then I'm going to press my velocity. We've called our zero. Now let's call the velocity. Press cal velocity. And again, the machine is asking you, what is that value, that sound path? And it's four inches. So I'll adjust this to four inches. And then the check mark will, will calculate. And that will calculate uh, my calibration and completes the calibration. In this case, the zero is 14.12 microseconds. That's how much time is spent um, in the wedge. It doesn't take into account uh, the steel. We, we, do, we don't want to have um, the wasted time into our calculation. And velocity for this uh, IIW reference block, it changed velocity from 0.128 to 0.129 inches per microsecond. And we can double check. I can bring the gate over by four inch radius and look at my sound path up here, four inches. Bring the gate over to my two inch radius and take that to 80% full screen height. And it's right at two inches. So now our machine is calibrated. The next thing we want to do is we want to see is this wedge really 45 degrees? Under use, it could change the angle slightly, so we always want to uh, measure our real angle. And the way we do that, on this IW Type 2 block, I have a scale here. In this case, I'm using a 45 degree transducer. I have a scale that is from 30 degrees to 60 degrees along here. And what that does is this sound, I'm shooting down at this hole here. I'm looking for my maximum sound to come back. And let me uh, couple this. And here's the 45 degree mark. So I should be right in the ballpark here. So I'm going to put uh, couple it up. And let me take a little bit of gain out of this guy because I'm, I'm off the screen. And still off the screen. Take a little bit more gain out. Goodness gracious. Here we go. Take a little bit more. Now let me take, hit the peak memory. And I'm going to see where that signal peaks. That signal peaks right there. And I am measuring 40 three degrees. This wedge and using this hole is coming back and I look at my beam index point I have marked and looking at the scale it says 45, 44, 43 degrees. So um, it's slightly off. What I want to do is go into my trig function. I want to change my angle from 45 degrees to 43 degrees and that was a and this is in uh when it's underlined angle is coarse when you press the check button it'll put it in the fine mode and 43 degrees and there we go is 43 degrees. So I'm telling the machine that I'm actually using a 43 degree wedge and by putting it in your trig function it will keep all your calculations correct. So now we've calibrated, we've measured our angle. The last thing I want to show you is to set your reference sensitivity. And the IIW block has a uh, 60 thousandths through hole it is 0.6 inches deep. So I want to change my range. 45 degrees, I only need about a 2 inch range to find this hole. Just to make use of our, our screen width. Alright, change my range to 2 inches. There it is. I couple this guy up. 
and I'm going to use my 45 degree to find this side drilled hole. I see see it popping up right about right about here. Let me take that to auto 80. And let's zero that again. I'll find the peak energy. And right about there. That's look like that's the peak. So that is 45 degrees shooting down to that 0.6 inch deep hole. That is used for my reference. Now with AWS, I believe it says to, uh, the code says to set your reference level between 40 and 60% uh, percent full screen height. So I'm going to change my gain and bring this guy down to uh, right about there. That's 60% right here. 60% full screen height. That is your typical reference level. Uh, for an AWS exam and of course depending on the thickness of your part um, you'd have to look at the code you always scan hot this is your reference DB in this case it's 55.6 DB typically you'll you'll run uh, 6 DB to 12 DB hot it depends on the code um, but this is your reference level and what you would evaluate indications at at this reference level